Hey all you space cats, welcome to the Black Hole Podcast, Season 7, Episode 12. I'm your host, Mitch Miller, and presidential candidate. And I want to be clear, uh, I am not trying to replace the official voting system of the United States of America. I'm not trying to replace it with an electronic, online, internet-connected system. That's not what I'm trying to do at all. I believe that fill in the bubble, scantron sheets, you fill in the bubble for the candidate you want, is the most secure form of voting that you that we'll ever find in in our in our time and in into the future. Um, 75% of the population, at least 75%, most almost all of the voting population took standardized tests in the in their education system. They know how to use these sheets and fill in the bubble for the following the instructions and fill in the correct answer. Um, so, you know, that's that's what I believe. And, and now we have these scanners. We can scan these sheets very quickly. We can keep hard copies of the original sheets that were filled out by every individual. I think we should keep them for 20 years. The government should be able to afford to store these sheets so that we can go back 20 years on any vote and see who people voted for if we need a recount. But I also think voting should be convenient, which means I'm, I'm for voting by mail. I believe it's also the most secure system. Um, you know, it's not, again, you know, you have these touchscreen voting machines at our voting locations and I've always questioned, do they have a Wi-Fi backdoor, um, you know, things to update the software and stuff like that. I'm sure they don't, but let's make sure that that continues, that they are only use hard disks. And um, I'm going to make sure that all voting machines cannot connect to the Internet uh, really in any way, I would I would say. Um, but voting by mail is the most secure. You you put your vote in an envelope and no hacker can get into that envelope, right? There's scanners at the post office. They may see the uh, address that it's coming from, the address it's going to, but they can't see inside the envelope. So I believe voting by mail is the most secure uh, system. And uh, I'm for voting by mail. I'm for filling out those scantrons. And um, I'm not trying to replace the voting system in the United States. But some candidate's going to come along, and it may be sooner than later, that's going to come along and say, let's vote with our phones. We have face recognition software, fingerprint software securing our phones. I think we should be able to vote with our phones. That's what some candidate's going to say. That's not what I, Mitch Miller, am saying. That's why it's important, important to vote for me. I'm going to put things in perspective. I have... A, I have a healthy respect for technology. I think it could be used in very good and interesting ways. I just think we're doomed to never use it in those ways because it's all profit driven. Um, and that's where the government can step in and say, we're going to do what's best for the people, not for the profit of corporate executives and so on and so forth. Uh, so again, we're going to make sure that Voting machines don't have Wi-Fi backdoors. But here's here's the deal with our voting system here in the United States. Two parties wrote themselves in the power, right? And that's why I said two com they're they're corporate communists. They're they're two parties that play off of each other. Their ingen agenda is to enrich themselves. Um very few of them are looking out for the actual people. Uh and so but they, they changed the laws. They changed the local laws, the county laws, the state laws, the federal laws, so that they could stay in power forever. They changed the laws. They made it harder for independents and third parties to get on the ballot. There's thousands of cases where third parties require more signatures to get on the ballot in local, state, federal, county elections uh, in this country. So... I'll just pull up for the presidential race, for example. I found a Reuters uh, article. So most presidential candidates, the, the 
Democrat and Republican presidential candidates get automatically put on the ballot because they had support from other elections, right? So they're automatically put on the ballot once they become the candidate for each party. But uh, so in call. California, to qualify as a minor party, an organization must collect 75,000 signatures from residents who are willing to switch parties or register for the first time. An independent candidate must collect some 219,000 signatures, the most of any state, over a 105-day stretch that starts in April. In New York, in 2020, the governor at that time uh, led an effort to modify the state's ballot access law that changed the definition of pre-qualified party taking libertarian, green, and independence parties off the ballot. The petition requirement tripled to 45,000 signatures, including at least 500 in half of the state's 26 congressional districts, but the six-week petitioning period stayed the same. Texas independent Candidates must collect 113,151 signatures over a 70-day stretch that begins on May 13th. Voters who participate in a Republican or Democratic presidential primary election held on May 5th are disqualified from signing the petition. So, even if you if you participate, even if you are Republican and Democrat, and said I want to see what a third-party candidate has to say, you're disqualified from voting for them in Texas. These are just examples. A few examples of the incongruities of the voting system in the United States. They've made it nearly impossible for a third party or an independent candidate to enter into politics. Now, there's multi-party systems in uh, Europe and Latin America, but these corporate communists, these two parties, the Republicans and the, can and the Democrats, have written themselves into power and it's time to do something about it, right? Now is the time. So that's why I'm trying to build the Periscope platform so that not to replace the voting system. So it's so that elected officials have account accountability. Um, so everyone votes on issues posed by elected officials uh, and we can see how voters actually feel about these issues. Instead of relying on media-led polls, uh, you're relying on the media and them contracting companies to conduct polls, and that's how we, how elected officials get their information. This would be direct. It would be secured. There would be, you know, at first, if we can't get cooperation from the government, I have ideas of how we can secure uh, your membership to the Periscope platform. You would get, we would, Conduct, we would send you your username and password in the mail, and you wouldn't be able to change this. So we would generate, uh, you know, mail that would come to your address so that, you know, until it's secure, you don't necessarily have to upload your state-issued ID at first until we can get some cooperation. Uh, so the only way I would incorporate this Periscope platform, this direct voting platform, into the official system, the official voting system of the United States, the Republican-style voting system where we elect officials to conduct a republic. Um, the only way I would incorporate this online voting, direct voting system is in the petition process, right, to reverse how these parties wrote themselves into power to counteract that. So basically, only in districts where the two parties wrote law in unequally to make it difficult for a third party or independent candidate to get on the ballot, um, that's where we would focus our attention. So we would first have an accounting of every situation where the laws were made difficult for third party and independent candidates to get on the ballot. We would identify those localities, those counties, those states, so the, all the districts that these incongruities exist on. And then we would focus on making the petition process 
through the Periscope platform so that, uh, look, if these two parties don't want to adopt this system in, into the official voting system, then they simply change the laws back to the way they were when the Constitution was written, where it was easy for a multi-party system for third parties, independent parties. There weren't two, just two parties necessarily. It's our constitution wasn't written that way. They changed the state constitutions to make it difficult for third party and independent candidates. Um, so that's where we would focus, right? We'd go district by district and say, Hey, we want to incorporate this for the petition process. Um, you can keep your incongruities, but we want to adopt this as a way for petitioning and we would, uh, petition the courts and the local and county governments to allow us to do that. Look, if they don't want to do that, if they don't want to incorporate technology into the voting process whatsoever, then simply change the laws back and we'll continue to, uh, roll out paper petitions and knock on people's doors to get third party and independent candidates on the ballot. But Republicans and Democrats should have to get the exact same amount of signatures. It should be equal across the board. Uh, so building this Periscope platform where we can have a popular vote on the presidential candidate, the vice president, the st the Secretary of State and the Secretary of the Treasury. It allows us to say, hey, here's who we would vote for if the stakes weren't so high, right? We don't want to be stuck with Biden for four years, or we don't want to be stuck with Trump for four years. So we voted for them because we didn't essentially trust enough people to vote for Mitch Miller as president of the United States. And we were worried it would take votes away from them. So we voted the same party lines that we always have. If we build this platform, we'll be able, even if Trump is elected or Biden is reelected, we can say, look, with the stakes weren't so high, we, we did a mock vote of the popular vote in this country, and 62% of the popular vote voted for Mitch Miller. Um, if the hypothetical was that we, one of these two candidates wouldn't be in power for four years, right? So 62% of the popular vote voted for Mitch. Um, and they these candidates, when they're elected or reelected, would have to pay attention and enact the programs that I've proposed on this podcast so far. Right? And other programs that I have just floating around in my head that I can pose out there, I can put as a issue up for vote on the platform, and you can say, yeah, I think that's a good idea, or no, that doesn't make sense. So to make things equal as a candidate, right, both of these candidates are one-term candidates. Biden, Trump, they can only serve one term, according to the Constitution. Um, so, look, I'm willing to be a single-term president. If people vote on the platform that they don't want me to run for a second term, I won't run. And and that's how you get participation in this platform, right? At first, it's going to be the supporters that join the platform and say, well, we would vote for you, you know. Um, but once you start saying, hey, here's an opportunity to tell someone they're doing a bad job and that we don't want you to run for a second term, you're going to get the rest of the population to engage in the platform and then we'll have a real uh, real view of the popular vote in this country. So, uh, you know, that's, that's where it is. I'll be a one-term president. I'm willing to be a one-term president. And if you're going to enact term limits on Congress, the Supreme Court, any appointees or elected officials, you have to be willing to be a one-term president um, and say – hypothetically, that the president should only have one term, right, and l limit their terms. So I'm willing to do that. Um, I just want to close on talking about corporations. Um, look, in college, corporations became people, right? It makes you wonder if, if they can marry, 
but corporations were there was a Supreme Court decision that corporations would be considered people under the Constitution. And I think this is still upheld. Now, they would enjoy, these corporations enjoy the protections of a person under the Constitution. So here's my question. Why can't we make them say, pay the same tax rate as a person, right? Instead of a separate corporate tax rate, any, any profit, anyhow, so look, why can't we make them pay the same tax rate as a, as a person? Anything over whatever the thresholds are. I, I didn't look it up today, but anything over, you know, $20,000 is a 20% rate and so on and so forth up to 45% rate, right? Anything over 200,000 is 45%. Why can't we make these corporations, if they're going to enjoy the protections of a person, why can't we make them pay the same tax rate? I think we can. That's what I'll do as president. Um, otherwise they have to give up, uh, their protections, right? If you want to be protected as a person, you pay the same tax rate as a person. Otherwise, you're not going to enjoy the same protections granted to you by the Constitution as a person. So I just, look, corporations aren't people. Corporations are gangs of executives who hide behind the law so that, so that they can't be held liable for any of their decisions. So I don't think they should enjoy the protections granted to a human being under the Constitution. But uh, maybe that's changed. I, I haven't kept up with that particular Supreme Court decision. If it is still in effect, then I think they should pay the tax rate that a person pays. All right. Uh, so. You know, if you want to see other programs and ideas I have, uh, check out my websites, MitchForMayor.com. That's Mitch, the number four, Mayor.com, PlotM.com, TrapNet.org, and AlmaVoter.com. Thanks for listening, and until next time, I wish you peace, prosperity, and homeostasis.